Healthy animals are the key to profitable livestock farming. Shelter and shade from trees can help reduce environmental stresses on animals, improving their welfare and productivity. In this video, livestock farmers describe how trees benefit their animals. Um, and I can't emphasise enough the, um, the actual shade in the summertime for the stock, for stock health, especially on the hot days, and the shelter in the wintertime. And this is where we save a lot of our lambs, is shelter like this. They get up beside it, they don't even know it's blowing or raining. And in fact, a couple of years ago my forestry consultant come down at lambing time and we just had a, a quite a decent snowfall. And he said to me, I guess it's not a good day to come and uh, see you. And I said, well, it's not too bad really because we haven't lost a lamb so far this morning. I said, you just come with me. And the actual snow had blown, but behind the trees, was all these big green patches and all the sheep were cuddled in behind them and they're all as good as gold. So, you know, trees speak for themselves. This belt here I planted in 1981, it's just flax and Lombardi poplars. You know, once it was established, I've done virtually nothing to it. Most of my shelters to run to some degree north and south. If you are planting them east and west, you, you have to have deciduous or something quite low because you'll get quite a shading effect. 2010 in Southland, we had a, a weather experience at lambing time or snow, etc. We ended up with 123% lambing. That's uh, we weaned. That's what we weaned. Uh, I would shudder to think what we would have got if we didn't have shelter. Uh, because we are concentrating on lambing, shelter at lambing time is really vital to our operation and we consider that uh, lamb survival is closely related to uh, removing the chill factor from the westerly and southwest winds that often occur in that September uh, time of the year. And so uh, we've planted this place uh, with that in mind. We've got uh, mainly eucalypt trees running north and south, which ca carry the brunt of the southwest wind. And then running east-west, we've got deciduous trees, which are in the main androscoggin poplar and uh, tangoyo willow. And because they're deciduous, they let the light through uh, in the winter time. And even though they don't have leaves on them by lambing time, uh, at least the density of the branches and the tree, tree stems uh, do provide quite a measure of shelter. One of the things that's valid in recent times in this area is the big snow uh, right in the middle of lambing in September 2010. This area got 200 millimetres of snow, covered the grass completely, denied sheep access to fresh green grass, and so that's really, really big problem when sheep are lambing. And because we had shelter, uh, we were able to reduce the chill factor, we were able to give shelter, have shelter for our sheep, and the weather that followed that snowfall was appalling. Uh, for at least a week after the snow, there were squalls of hail, and because we had shelter, then we were able to enhance our lamb survival. And while we had greater losses than normal, uh, we still managed to, to turn out 156% true lambing percentage, uh, which we were thrilled about. Uh, we planted this, this uh, block it hasn't been managed particularly well. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, trees that might have been taken out, but we've pr pruned the, the good trees. But now, every winter, we use this for wintering our young deer. There'll be four to 500 wieners um, that winter in here. We let them run onto crops and the, uh, uh, the high producing um, pastures just next door, so the gates are open uh, right through the winter and when it's uh, really rough and snowy they'll probably come and sit in, in here for two or three days without even coming out and shelter, they lie on the, on the pine needles and in the shelter of, of these trees and the beauty of that is that with young deer when it's very cold they'll physically lose a lot of body weight regardless of how much feed they eat and in this environment we're keeping them warm and giving them high quality feed in the paddocks next door. So we manage this as a specifically, if you like, as a very large, um, what, 
40 hectare, 45 hectare wintering pad for our winter deer every year. The second step was to come and do space planting of trees to make it a, a much more congenial and, and what I believe is a more profitable situation for animals to be grazed. A lot of that is to do with reducing the stress level of the animals, also temperature control of the animals. They, all, all of them, whether it be sheep, cattle or deer, will use the shade and the shelter all the time to regulate their temperature. This very much relates into a lowering the physical stress and obviously relates to profits in the animals. This shoutabout is made up of eucalyptus cordata with an underplanting of toy toy. The cordata is probably going to be too vigorous for the toy toy to actually survive, but it has helped with the the shelter up till now. The advantages of this particular species are they're narrow going and they keep their leaves right to the uh, to the ground and also they flower in late winter and early spring when there's nothing else flowering around so the native birds really love them and it's great coming out on a cold spring day and seeing tuis and bowbirds fighting over the, the flowers on these trees. We're taking out a triple line shelter through here, approximately $6,000 worth net of trees standing up there after the harvest and marketing and transport costs. So over the years they've contributed some shelter. Um, I won't be replacing them because they've been shading that the paddock beyond. Virtually all the rest of the woodlots are being replaced. Um, on this property we've got various uh, types of shelter belts. We've got multi-row shelter belts, that is um, shelter belts made up of a number of rows of trees. Uh, we have single belt shelter belts, which is just one row of trees. Um, usually with mixed species, I, I like to um, uh, mix up the trees so that um, they're visually more appealing and um, we get light and shade. We have deciduous trees in the winter time which will let um, light pass through and then in the summertime we get the added um, benefits of shading for the cattle. We're facing um, pretty much south here, south is that way, and we're, we're still getting this, this south-west south westerly wind coming in, but the cattle here, are, are, they're, they're fully fed um, and they're sheltered. So they're very comfortable. When these animals are um, um, at rest, in other words, camped or just standing quietly, this is when we're getting milk production. Um, and Quite a bit of this is coming from the benefits of shelter. So one of the other benefits of trees apart from the commercial and soil conservation aspects of it is providing shelter and shade for livestock. So we uh, certainly have some uh, shelter belts here on the runoff. We use eucalypt species. We've got some uh, good old plain radiata here for shelter belts. Um, there's no doubt that you know we're getting some hot summers here in the Waikato. It's been a great summer this year, but previous years it's been pretty warm, and we certainly do find the cows making available of them, you know, availing themselves of the shade and shelter that's offered by the trees, either in a shelter belt. Um, on our home farm, we've planted at 15 metre spacings uh, a whole lot of uh, chestnut trees. They'll be 20 years time seriously big trees. We'll prune them and that'll give us a timber option, a shelter and shade option um, and also as it happens chestnuts are quite nice to eat so there might be a little bit of a benefit there as well. Yeah so we're also um, establishing a series of shelter belts over the farm so what we're trying to do is um, uh, especially in Reparore here and that we want to try and cut down that southerly wind um, whistling up the farm uh, especially through like the likes of carving and stuff so what we're doing is any any fence lines running um, east-west, we're looking at planting some low cover, so uh, low, low shelter belt, so we're looking at um, cabbage trees uh, with flax along the bottom, so something that keeps nice and short, the cows can get in uh, out of the wind, that southerly wind, and uh, during the winter it also means that with Repra here getting lots of frost and things, um, we haven't got a whole lot of shading on that southern side because the trees aren't that, won't grow that big. We, out of the 90 hectares of the dairy farm we've probably got about over 5% of the farm um, retired, whether that be in uh, riparian plantings or, or forestry plantings. So uh, since we've done that, there's been no 
you know, you think you might be giving up some, some sort of land that the cows could be grazing, but really it hasn't made a, a difference at all to the grass production we've done on the farm. Those areas weren't growing much anyway. But basically, from the sheep farm, we thought that system worked well. We'd brought the dairy farm, there were no trees on it at all, except for around the house and that. So we thought we'd start doing the system here. And it seems to have worked quite well because basically you're not taking much ground off up here at all. It might even pay we could lift the bottom wire and the cows can actually chew under. So you'd actually only lose a little bit of grass. There's all these tree leaves here for the cows to happily nibble on. Having the poplars coming up has just given me so much instant shelter for the farm. And the, and the totras will take over when these are reduced. The research I've heard from Dairy Insight is cows don't like being over um, 22 degrees in temperature. Um, they start to, their production starts dropping and we get, quite often we'll get 28 degrees here without much wind. So, I mean, just figure shade's quite important for them. So, um, and it seems to be working. It's, it's hard to measure whether that's actually working in their vat or not, but observing them, you know, they sit here in the shade, they munch on the tree leaves, so I guess more research will probably prove that in the future.